Hey guys, this is actually my first video on YouTube. It's for all the people who wants to learn, you know, in a simple way. And of course, some people will know better than me, and I would be very glad to accept their views and opinions. Please like and share the video. So today we'll be just starting with the introduction to a microprocessor. So what is actually a microprocessor? Microprocessor is actually a program control device which fetches, decodes and executes information all stored in the memory. So microprocessor is also used as a CPU in computer. Most of them are single chip devices. Now an important term uh, which is used in the microprocessor literature is a bus. So what is a bus? A bus is actually a group of conducting lines which will be carrying a data address as well as control signals. So basically there will be three bus, data bus, address bus and control bus. There is a conducting line which will be carrying the data or known as data bus. The conducting line which will be carrying all the address are known as the address bus and the con Conducting lines which will be carrying all the control signals are known as a control bus. Now going on to the basic components of a microprocessor. The basic components of a microprocessor include the arithmetic and logical unit, the flag register, the timing and control unit, the register array or internal memory, the instruction decoding unit and the program counter or instruction pointer. So the ALU. The ALU will be performing all the arithmetic and logical operations. All will be done in the binary form, binary language, that is in the form of zeros and ones. The various conditions of the result will be stored as the status bits in the flag register. For example, one of the bits of the flag register will be the sign flag. It will be storing all the sign of the result of the operation done in the ALU. That is, uh, for example, if the result of an operation is negative, then it will be stored as 1 in the sign flag. And if the result of an operation done in the ALU will be positive, it will be zero. It will be stored as 0 in the sign flag. Uh, now, we will be going on to the register array. The register array is actually an internal storage device and that is why it is also known as internal memory. For doing any you uh, you know for doing any operations in the ALU, um, we need to give information uh, from this memory to the ALU. That is, the input of the ALU will be given from this register array, and the output of the ALU will also be stored in the register array. And for um, any microprocessor, there will be a set of instructions given by the micro manufacturer of the microprocessor. So for doing useful work with the microprocessor, we need to write a program using these instructions and store them in, you know, the memory device. And usually the memory device will be kept external to the microprocessor. Now going on to the program counter. The program counter will be generating the address of the instructions which need to be fetched from the memory and set them through the address bus to the memory. Okay. And the memory will send all the instructions code through the data bus and it will be sending to the instruction decoding unit. The instruction decoding unit will send all the information to the timing and control unit. The data will be stored in the register array for processing by the ALUs. The data stored in here will be given to ALU so that the ALU can perform the operations on there. And the output of the ALU will be stored here. The control unit will generate the necessary control signals for internal as well as external operation of the microprocessor. So once again, uh, once again, we will just go through what I said. So the ALU will be performing all the arithmetic and logical operations and all this will be done in the form of binary form that is in the form of zeros and ones. And the various conditions of the result will be stored as status bits in the flag register. For example, one of the bits of the flag register is actually a signed flag. It will be storing all the signs of the results of the uh, ALU. That is if the result is negative, it will be stored as 1 in the flag register. It is if the result is positive, it will be stored as 0 in the signed flag of the flag register. Now the re register array. Register array is actually an internal storage device. That is why it is given the name as an internal memory. All the input data of the ALU will be given from the register array. Also, the output data of the ALU, that is the result of the computations and other binary information needed for the processing will also be stored in the register array. 
for any microprocessor there will be a lot of set of instructions which will be given by the manufacturer itself and so if we need to perform some useful work with this microprocessor we need to write a program with these instructions and store them in a memory and usually like i said before the memory will be placed external to the microprocessor now program counter program counter will generate the address of the instruction which need to be fetched from the memory and these it will send all these to the address bus to the memory the memory will send the instruction codes and data through the data bus and the instruction uh, decoding unit will uh, decode all the instruction and will be sending the necessary information to the timing and control unit the data will be stored in the register array so that it can be given to the alu for the processing the control unit will generate the necessary control signals for internal and external operations of the microprocessor so actually that's all for the regarding the basic introduction to a microprocessor thank you